All right, so we'll go over basic introduction to integration under calculus. So what is integration? So you can think of integration as the opposite of differentiation. In other terms, we can call it anti-differentiation. So when you hear the word antiderivative, don't basically be confused. Just know that it's the opposite of basically what you do. So under differentiation, we already know that if you have a function, for example, y is equal to 2x to the power 3. You understand that, of course, let me add the 1 there. You understand that if you try to determine the derivative of this function, it is going to be equal to 3 times 6, 6, 3 times 2, 6, and then x squared. So, of course, the constant goes away. So, this is differentiation. Now, the opposite, where you need to reverse that back to that, that is what we call integration. So, basically, we know that according to power rule, if you are trying to determine the dy dx, which is, of course, the derivative, what we said is, when you look at 2x to the power 3, what, you're going to, what is going to happen is, you are going to subtract a 1 from the power, so from the 3 would use a 1, and then, of course, I think the first thing before I actually lose you is when you look at the 2x to the power 3 first thing is multiply 3 times 2 okay so you multiply the 3 by the 2 and then reduce the power by 1 so if you multiply 3 times 2 I have 6 and then reduce the power by 1 that is 3 minus 1 and then that is your answer the constant disappears away okay in other terms, if you look at the constant plus 1, it's more like what you have is 1 multiplied by x to the power 0. 0 times 1 will give us a 0. So that's why we have, that's why constants disappear. Okay. So of course, this becomes 6x squared. Now, if you're trying to think of the opposite, what you might expect is we'll do actually the opposite. So the first thing what, what you're supposed to do is we'll add the 1 to the power because we know that we subtracted. And then, of course, we'd have to divide by the result, 2 plus 1. So if you try to look at that, you're going to have 6x to the power 3 over 3, which will give us what? Which will 3 into 6 is 2, so I have 2x to the power 3. So you've seen that you've reversed, and this is basically what you need to do for basic integration. Not as complicated, right? But again, it becomes a bit tricky, because if you try to observe what is happening here, you see, all we are able to get back is 2x to power 3. We can't get back the 1. And you realize that there are many and derivatives of every derivative. By that, what I mean is, if you look at 6x squared, there are likely to be other functions that can also give you that derivative. For example, if you look at y is equal to 3x squared, maybe plus a 1 as well, Okay, you may have another one, maybe 2x to the power 3, but with a different constant. So you notice that they are all actually taking us back to the same thing there. If you differentiate this one, it will give you that. Wait, wait. Uh, no, that one won't work. The power is supposed to reduce by... Well, let's think of 3x... Uh, x to the power 3 again, but maybe with a different uh, constant. Yeah, maybe 7. Okay, so the, the point that I'm trying to make here is basically the constants may vary. So integration itself reversing that, all we are able to get is only this first part. The constants are not gotten. So that's why when you integrate in such a case, when you integrate 6x squared, what you're going to have is 2x to the power 3. So what you basically need to do is add a constant c. Okay? That's what you do. So that's the basic idea. This is what actually what we call indefinite integrals because we are not sure what constant was there. Okay? But this is the basic introduction to integration. Let's try to look at different cases or different things that we might expect for different kinds of uh, functions. 
Okay. So in a case where you have, uh, you are told your dy dx, for example, maybe is equal to 2x plus 1. How do you integrate that? <coughs> so when you integrate 2x plus 1, what you expect is, for 2x, increase the power by 1. x is the power 1, so increase it by 1 and then divide by that same 1. And then for the 1, in such a case, when you have a constant, know that x is the power 0, so you add the 1 and then divide by the result as well. So add a constant, because we don't know the constant that was there, that was eliminated in the differentiation process. So what we're going to have is 2x, 2x to the power 2 over 2 plus x to the power 1 over 1 plus c, which just gives us uh, x squared plus x plus c. So what we have here is what we call the ant what? Ant derivative. Okay. Now let's look at something different. So we've seen that in a case where you have a constant, in a case where you have dy dx is equal to just let's say two, that's your derivative. If you integrate that, the integral of a constant is just going to be at the variable, so it's going to be 2x and then plus c. Okay? That's the basic idea. In other terms, again, what we're trying to say is, if you look at the 2, the 2 itself as it's more like it's being multiplied by x, but the power is 0, so you need to increase the power of x by 1, and then divide by 1. So you know 1s will not make any difference. So it just leaves us with 2x. <laughs> okay? Okay? The other thing we can talk about is, if your dy dx is uh, is just a variable, for example x, you expect what you expect is uh, the integral of x is going to be what? It's going to be the x that you have is to the power one, so you increase the power by one, and then divide by the result, which is of course one plus one is a two, again plus c, so it gives us x squared over two plus c. Then of course. <coughs> Things go on and on. Um, generally, we can put it this way. If your dy dx is equal to x to the power n, uh, if that is your derivative, d integrating x to the power n is more like you increase the power by 1 and then divide by the result and then add a constant c. That's the basic formula for integration, which is the opposite of what? Differentiation. Now, one thing that you need to note is this only works in a case where n is not equal to negative 1. Only when n is not equal to negative 1. Why? Because if n is equal to negative 1, if you've got x is equal to negative 1, and then you get to add the 1 there, and then divide by the result. So, this, is, this makes to be undefined. This is undefined. So we are trying to avoid such a case. Notice that I'm not saying that all negative numbers, but I'm only saying negative 1. If you have a negative 2, for example, it's going to work. Okay? But if you have got a negative 1, it won't work. So that's where you say that the integral of x to the power negative 1, which of course is more like the integral of 1 over x, this is now where you get of a natural log of x. Okay, very important. This applies to all the other cases as well. You may have a case where you have the integral of x plus 1 raised to the power negative 1. Even in such a case, take note, you can't add a 1 and uh, of course divide by result. So it just becomes <coughs> the natural log of the absolute value of x plus a 1. Okay. Now, just trying to make things a bit more interesting, the other thing that we know about in terms of differentiation, we've looked at what we, we used to call, we called it what? Um, we called it the chain rule. So in a case where you have 2x squared uh, plus a 1 raised to the power 4, right? We understand that if you are to differentiate that, the dy dx is going to be 
the yes of course the coefficient you have there multiplied by the 4 you have got to get a 4 and then the other thing that we need to do is we need to multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets so the derivative of what is in the brackets in this case derivative of 2x squared plus 1 gives us what I believe we have a 4x so therefore our result becomes 4x and then you have oh, 4 times 4x is 4x I think that is 16x and then we have 2x squared plus 1 and then of course let's not forget that the power reduces by 1 so it's the power 3 the power 3 so basically that's what we <coughs> we have in such a case so when it comes to the reversing now assume you are taught to reverse 16x uh, 2x squared plus 1 to the power 3 how do you how would you handle that how would you basically reverse everything so in a case where you've got something in the brackets since one thing that I can think of is we need first of all to add back our power so if we add back our power if we add the 1 to the power 3 it becomes the power 4 and then of course we know that initially what happened is we multiplied it with the coefficient so we would have to divide it we would divide the 4 as usual then the other thing that we know is we multiply it by what is inside the bracket the derivative of what is in the bracket so here we are going to we are going to divide by the derivative of what is in the bracket so the derivative of what is in the bracket is 4x okay so let's don't forget there's a 16x there so if we do basically get to divide on the bottom we're also going to get 16x so it takes us back to that so that's how you can reverse some of these certain things and I think this is where the of course you look at more questions like that under uh, your substitution but that is just like an idea of what you need to know <coughs> and then I also introduce you to some of the basic uh, trigonometry differentiation for example you've got sine of x uh, let me put it sine x squared so that you get the basic idea so we know that if that is your y and then you try to differentiate it right your y prime is going to be as follows so again take this to be what is in the brackets so the derivative of of x squared is 2x so you're going to have 2x and then we we'll maintain the entire other part as I believe as it is <coughs> so in a case where but of course this is not correct <laughs> so the first part that the first thing that you'd want to do is if you differentiate sine x squared first of all differentiate sine the derivative of sine is cosine so you have cosine x squared and then multiply by the derivative of what is in the brackets which is 2x so the answer becomes 2x cosine x squared so if you are to reverse it the reversing of 2x cosine x squared is expected to be as follows so if you look at the <coughs> you need to you need to look at this uh, in in a certain way so first of all of course there is also going to be a better way of approaching this but for now we we'll try to approach it directly as possible as as we can so if you look at it in this way you know that the integral of uh, cosine is what the integral of cosine is sine so we have sine x squared now the other thing that you know is when you are basically differentiating you basically multiply it so here we divide by the derivative of what is there so the derivative of that is what is 2x so that will go now of course we'd have to add a constant because we do not basically know if there was a constant initially there even if we in this case we are clearly able to see what was there so in other terms the general way of looking at this is if you have sine mx the integral of that is expected to be what you need to do is we are going to yeah 
but of, of, of course in this case where we've got sine the integral of sine we understand that the derivative of sine is cosine right so the integral of cosine is sine now we know that the in, the derivative of cosine is negative sine so if we are to integrate a positive sine it's like we're reversing we expect that it's going to be a negative cosine right so we're going to have a negative cosine mx is going to be maintained and then we are going to divide by what we're going to divide by the derivative of what is in brackets so it's more like one over the derivative of what is in brackets which is just like m in this case if you've got mx there if you've got mx squared it will be 2m and then of course plus sc which is clearly what we also add in that case so one thing that you're noticing one thing that you're seeing is for the sake where you've got the the trigonometric functions it's like what we have is uh, the u substitution as well or what we have is the chain rule so we'll reverse it the same way now going back to these guys which are very interesting the exponentials and whatnot one thing that you are able to remember is when we were dealing with uh, the integral of uh, let me say the derivative of exponentials if you've got it the power 2x uh, one thing that you know is when you look at that you expect that the derivative or short story the, 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 <laughs> yes the derivative is going to be you need to maintain it and then of course what you do is you multiply by the derivative of a power so the derivative of a power is 2 and then of course natural log of e as well which is the base in this case of course in this case it will be eliminated so you are going to have 2 e to the power 2x now if you are to reverse this the opposite is true so what we basically get to do to reverse is the integral of an exponential function is as simple as dividing by the derivative of a power so we're going to have 2 e to the power 2x and then we we'll divide by the derivative of a power which is of course a 2 which will give us back our e to the power 2x but of course we need to add a constant because we are not sure if there was a constant available or not okay so basically this is our introduction to integration we'll proceed and just look at uh, the way we can look at integration as a summation and indefinite integration